Thank you for making time for us. Please, for the benefit of our viewers, please introduce yourself. Who am I talking to today? Um, first of all, thank you for allowing me into your homes and giving me the opportunity to share a little bit of my story. Um, yeah, my name is Anthony Homome Odiase. I am a Nigerian by birth, but I've been a permanent resident um, of South Africa for a few years now. Um, you could say that um, it was by divine appointment that I actually um, came into this nation because after many years of um, being involved um, with praise and worship in my country back home, in fact, I think it was after a couple of years after I got saved that I actually um, was invited to partake of the ministry team getting involved at one of the most prestigious churches in the country, the Household of God Fellowship, where I spent about 10, 10 years very much involved with the praise and worship. I believe as of this time, I have been the, the, the longest serving um, professional um, and ministry worship musician you you could say that that church had um, I served on that pastor Chris Okote for many years um, and I learned quite a few things from him but apart from that um, you could say that um, my family also um, my dad in fact um, composed my country's national anthem the present one my um, late father, to whom I owe a lot to because of the inspiration that he gave to us as a family and what he stood for. Um, and I grew up within that family with all the musical giftings that one would think of. Um, he actually studied in England um, at one of the Royal Colleges of Music, the, the Royal Military College of Music, and he was sent there on a scholarship. And um, I am so fortunate to have grown up under his tutelage. And I wouldn't say that it was trust or forced upon me. I would say that it was something that I actually developed a love for. Um, I think my dad tried to, I'm looking for the right words, to to push me away from actually going into the profession. But he saw that my desire was so much and he just had to let me be. And I believe that he was, I mean, I owe a lot to him and, um, and I miss him, you know, um, but Back to me right now. Um, I, I, I seem to be the one who is actually running with the banner. It's been handed into my hands and I'm sparing on the musical giftings of my family. Um, but more so, I think God permitted that because in the course of my searching for this dream of becoming new, musically excellent and um, diverse and to get into the field of education with um, with, with him that as well. I found the Lord um, while I was still in high school towards the last couple of years of my high school studies. Um, how should I say he found me rather, which is the most, the most appropriate thing to say because if you look at it, I think I was being pursued more than I was pursuing him. <laughs> Jesus is always wonderful. Anyway, and I thank him. And in the course of my journey of of becoming um, um, a skillful musician, um, I I I sort of came into a greater rea realization of my calling. Um, first of all, as as a minstrel or it's hard to actually put a label on it because you discover in your walk with God that He takes you from one place to another, from one thing into another. And 
I have been very fortunate to have had the opportunity to have, to, have, to have come into the Republic of South Africa at the time that I did with aim of studying at the Rima Bible College where I spent three to four years and concurrently um, within the first year of coming in I also got admission to the University of South Africa to study musicology and at that point in time um, oof, you know things became really really busy and at the same point in time also after about a year of coming in I was also ended the opportunity to actually teach at the Rima Bible College um, music there um, specifically contemporary piano and music theory and which I continued for about six years even after I finished my studies at the Bible College um, because they realized that God had actually called me to what I was doing and apart from being part of the worship team from time to, to time and I got involved with um, playing with the morning band and with the evening band at the Rima um, 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 Bible Church in Randburg. Um, I was also very much involved with, um, with um, a couple of other churches as well. Um, um, apart from where 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 I am right now and um, Logos Prophetic Ministries with Pastor Siva where I spent about four um, years before I went abroad and um, the King's Assembly um, with um, Pastor Ladi Kuyuni who is no longer the pastor of the church and he handed it over to someone else um, so there has been a little bit of experience both on the ministerial side of music and and the academic side and the popular music side of music so it's been sort of like an all around that I've been very much involved with performance and I've been very much involved with teaching as well because I did a lot of teaching and not just at the Bible College but also at the Dominican Convent School where I spent about seven years um, working um, before I went abroad to the United Kingdom in 2014 um, where I went to do my masters um, in composition of music for film and television at the University of Bristol and came back recently this year so it's been a lot of studies and training wow. yeah yeah okay I think I'm gonna that's as much <laughs> as I'm gonna say uh, right now about about my education. I, I'm amazed. There's so much that uh, that we need to talk about. It's like it's like incredible. But let me, let me just try and, and, and zoom in on some of the aspects okay. that I want to touch on. If one were to call in the music world, what are you correctly referred to? Who who's Tony? Is Tony musician, musicologist? What who do we call you on the music world? Well. He, you could label me on the three three different headings: a composer, a music educator, um, and a performer. Um, but I do more of the music education side, music teaching, um, than I do more of the composing or the producing aspects. Um, haven't been involved with production for a few years um, and the fine tuning of that um, at the University of Bristol um, we had the opportunity to focus in on your composition skills because that was what my master's was, was in apart from my university teachers music licentiate my 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 UTLM in piano that gives me the added privilege of being certified to teach um, apart from my degree you could that was like a dual certification so it was a very advanced degree that I actually did at the University of South Africa and I mean people often go through the degree and you need two or three exams at the very last stages to actually pass because for the licentiate there are three very big aspects there's the performing aspect there is the teaching aspect and there is the um, methodology 
aspects, teaching methods. And if you fail any aspect of the exam, you do the whole thing again. And I was very fortunate that in one go, in one sitting, I passed all of them. You know, uh, and it's not just something that has that has happened in one stage. Even when I was at the King's College, Lagos, that was my high school studies. Um, I got the best results in the country at the senior educational level when I did the exam. The best result in music. Um, I think it was an A of some sort. It's been many years now. And I got the the, the the music prize for that, and that sort of indicated to me that uh, okay, there's more to the to the person who is just studying music or who who is just a performer. That maybe I can make it a career. And in the music industry, if you are going to actually um, make the most of it you cannot just be defined as one you you cannot just stick to a to a to a certain stream and say that you are just a performer or you are just a teacher or you are just a composer or you are just a writer um i haven't done a lot of writing um i think i've done a little a couple of um of um articles for a couple of people that were in a couple of magazines um, but apart from that I haven't really done a lot of writing and and I don't want to say that I'm going to do a lot of writing later on and then I become a music historian or a writer but maybe it actually depends on on factors if I'm going to be settling down soon, if I'm going to be working more in, in the country than outside of the country, or what opportunities would be out there that I need to, or whatever calling that the Lord would actually um, lead me into. Um, now I'm trying to divide my my time strategically between my, my, my holidays and my actual um, school working time when I'm teaching them. And so on. Um, um, yeah, you know, or even when I'm doing private studio teaching mm -hmm. with um, the company that I am employed with right now. Yeah. Uh, just now, the bit I want to ask, just pertaining to music one more time, would you say it's important to be trained in music matters? Uh, rather than just having it as a gift? How has that oh, been? Yes. Because you grew up in a family where your dad was musically inclined, so you could oh, yeah. have literally just followed it from that angle, but you went deep into being schooled about it. Yes. What is the difference? Is it important that one gets schooled? Do you know what? I would... I would say, um, as much as people have picked it up on the side and they sort of they find out that they are musically gifted and they run with that. There's also the the other aspect of developing your gift and your skill. And there's also the the, uh, the aspect of you not even being gifted, but you just wanting to uh, have an, a music appreciation idea of what is going on. And then you step into it and then you find out, okay, this is not for me, but it was good to know about. All of the above food that I, I've just spoken about, um, spoken about is, is is important because each one plays a role in the musically diverse cultural um, um, field that music is all about. Because it's not just about about singing or playing; it's also about people listening and appreciating, and you being able to. Not just entertain, but also meet certain needs, functions. And the skill, the understanding, the gift, everything comes into play. You know, um, for many years um, that I played, before I started my actual focus training, um, I played for about six or seven years. Um, 
yeah, six to seven years at the household of God. And even with all of that, I had a piano at home. Um, I had my dad's books, you know, he, he, I mean, he had books that he, he came with. So from time to time, I, I even have a few of the books here, a couple of them, I would actually read up on those things. So I did a lot of personal training, even before getting into instruction with other teachers, apart from getting advice from my dad when I needed advice, because he wasn't my teacher. I would say that he was more of of a model and a figure to inspire than for um, me in what I wanted to do than the actual training. He was more my, my father than my teacher, which was the whole point, you know. I mean, I loved them. And um, when I needed advice about a couple of things, I would go to him, but it wasn't a consistent thing. I think he wanted me to discover for myself if this was what I wanted to do. You know, and if I was going to take the steps to actually go ahead and pursue that without, and with the books being there, the academic side is important. The personal drive, because you run with a pet, with the passion, the passion that you've got is what's going to keep you. And you know, whether you're being paid for it or you're not being paid for it, if that is not there, it's just, it is just going to fizzle out. You know. Um, so the passion is important, and then you've got the the skill, uh, or you could say you have the gift before the skill. The gift is there, the gift is there, but the gift needs to be expressed. So you need the tools to enable you to express that gift. And I was very fortunate that even that by the age of ten, that um, after my dad came back from. For the studies, because he he actually went twice um, to to the UK. It wasn't just once. After he came back the second time, he secretly bought an upright piano and kept it somewhere else until we un, until about a couple of years when we all started bugging him, and then we just found out that the old, a piano materialized out of somewhere without us knowing. He had already planned that his kids, maybe one or two of them, or we may want to get involved with, with music. And I think his plan was to also um, give us the, 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 the opportunity as, as a family to be musically industrious in the sense of like making it a trade of some sort. Maybe having a, um, a business that sells instruments or you know, caters to um, um, entertainment functions and things like that, if we are going to get involved in that. But he served in the police for a very long time. He, he, was, he was a police commissioner um, for my country, but specifically assigned as the head of the Nandran police band, which had um, branches throughout the country, you know, he was the director of music. Um, yeah, so coming back to your question, all of that aided in my development. It's not just something you've got to pursue it. You've got to get as much training as possible. You, you've got to get a mentor, if possible, someone that you can sit under. I've had several teachers. It's not just one person. I mean, I can mention a few names, Maria Aseva, the resident pianist at the Muson School of Music, the Russian teacher there, that took me on scholarship for about a year. Miss um, Edna Shoyungu, that, 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 that took me in a little bit of theory as well. Mr. Um, um, Taiwo that taught at the King's College, um, even, even, even here in South, in South Africa, um, Professor Yuan Pothita, um, that was a lecturer. Um, I'm not sure um, which university he was at, but he's retired now. And he took me in teaching me in teaching methods when I did my licentiate um, at the University of Bristol. Um, um, you would mention people like um, oof, and, uh, I'm trying to remember Professor. There's just the name skipped me. Well, anyway, but the thing about it was that 
I, I, I've had a lot of teachers, you know, and they have, each, each person comes with something to deposit in you. And if you're wise, you would listen very carefully and you would listen and you would take in everything because they come from different cultural backgrounds with different experiences and each one aids in, in your development. So you cannot be narrow-minded, you must be open-minded, but also knowing who you are. It's like saying water is coming from the tap, but you don't filter it. Now, if you're going to drink it, it depends on what you want to use it for. You, you, you are, you're going to take it through various processes. If it's just for washing your hands, you just wash your hands. If you're going to drink it, you're going to make sure that it's very clean. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good enough for consumption. So it depends on your use of it. What do you want to use the information that all of your various sources I given to you. How are you going to use that? Yeah. We're going to go into this at our next okay. interview with you. But the last thing I want to ask okay. you, uh, John 4, which is what we refer to a lot, yeah, yeah. Uh, verse 23, maybe if I start there, uh, the Bible says that the True time is coming person. okay, when we basically, uh, when two worshippers will worship in and truth. So I want to ask, in, in, your, in, your, in your experience with music, in your, in your teaching, in your composition, in your, in your, in your everything career-wise about music, and being, again, let me bring it here, being a man of God, a prophet of God, a, a teacher of the Word, do we have two worshippers? In other words, since one, again, I don't expect you to go yes. into depth, so I just want to give yes. you a, a perspective. We'll take we'll yes. this at the next one yes. as well. Yes. Do we, I mean, since God basically fired Lucifer, yes. has he, from the human perspective, received true worship that was basically prophesied in John 4? Oh, yes. Are we, are we able to, are we Jesus those said, notes? Jesus said, let us just, let us just get in. yes, let me just say what he said there. Let me just read, read that. And then I'm going to tie it into what Joel, Joel said, because the answer is what the Spirit of God is giving to you now. Uh, it says here, right, in John 4, I believe it's first, it says, The hour is coming and now is. It said the hour is coming. Remember that we, with God there is always a taste before a fullness. There is always a pre before. There is always a prophetic um, going forth before the fullness of it comes. Okay. A lot of the people that encountered Jesus, a lot of them that believed him, that had faith, responded to him, bowing. Um, things were dropped within their hearts. Peter. The revelation that came forth, he acknowledged, he recognized who he was. Remember Matthew chapter 16 and so on. In the same breath, Satan came in and said something else. And we see that, so there is always that light, darkness, light in the midst of that. So we are caught in that. Okay, until the fullness of true worship comes. Now, God has true worshippers in this day and in this age. Because true worship cannot happen without the Spirit. And Jesus Christ, right? Let me just say this. Every man that has responded in worship to God, God originated that via His Spirit. Even without men even knowing it. Because they haven't seen Him. They haven't... You know, but God originated or worked that within the heart of that man. Okay. Secondly, your answer, I believe, is exactly what Joel said. The fullness or the beginning of that fullness, should I say, started in the in Jesus coming, him shedding his blood, the blood being accepted, the ascension, the spirit of God being poured out. I will pour out my spirit of one all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy that is the very answer to that because scripture must answer scripture 
the Lord answers his own word. Is that true worship? Jesus said now that it had already started with him being there. By him saying now is, it means that he is initiating it. And he's initiating it by a revelation of himself because he said to the woman, I am he. And what did she do immediately? She believed. Because remember what he said to her. He said, woman, in verse 20, he says, woman, believe me. He went to us to initiate something. Remember what he said, I must go through Samaria. He was going to initiate worship in that place. A recognition of himself. You guys need to recognize me first. It is actually going to start. It's not going to be in the place that you think it is. Famous Jerusalem. Da, 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 da. He went out of that area to go look for this woman. This woman was going to be the door to get him into the Sumerian community. So it has actually started. But the fullness of it. Remember what I said. Light and darkness. Light and darkness. So it is depend. It is... I, I, I don't say dependent upon it. It is paramount that we keep a close relationship, a personal relationship with Him. And to be humble also, because you may not have what God wants to say or initiate through you, or tr at that point in time, He may want to do it through someone just hitting the drums, which is tsh, tsh. or someone who's been sad and God drops a word of I will never leave you and I will never forsake you and it comes like a song to to them and it's not a song that is known the preparation must be done you must have your team ready do whatever you know but you cannot depend on you need to depend upon God irrespective of the preparation yes true worship we have true worshipers because the Lord is the one who starts it. He knows those who seek Him. This is deep. But for what you've spent time on today, wow, I'm amazed. And thank you so much for making time for us. Thank you. And, and may the Lord continue to, to spare you for us, because I think there's a lot to explore on earth, especially uh, men of God, that God is endowed with intellectual and spiritual knowledge and depth of what this topic is about. And we'll catch up again. Thank you, Pastor Tony. Thank you, Leander. You are very blessed. Okay.